It is in Jacksonville. It won't be a weather factor. You're right. Uh, Trevor Simeon is out. Paxton Lynch is in. Denver's coming off a overtime loss to Kansas City. They're going to be licking their chops. They're also two games, I believe, behind the Oakland Raiders now in the AFC West. I do see Denver pulling this game out. I see them uh, beating the Jacksonville Jaguars by at least seven. I'll go 24-17 Denver. Oh, yeah, I do think so. I think that that Joey brings up a good point. Gus Bradley is is shot. And the team has so much promise. All you fantasy football owners out there, Allen Robinson, if you haven't benched him by now, this is week 13. I think this is the week you most definitely sit him if you have someone else, even an Anquan Bolden who might only catch three balls a game, but normally one of them's for a score. Yeah, Yeah, one of them's going to be in the paint. Biggest bust bust in the draft this year. Denver Broncos secondary is serious business, that's for sure. Yeah, and uh, Allen Robinson has been just as awful as DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, it's a shame. I, I don't even. I'm not. I'm, I, it's hard to blame DeAndre Hopkins because it's more so to me. It's the ineptitude of his quarterback with Brock Osweiler. Mm, yeah, no, I, and I'm not really blaming Hopkins as much as it's just he he's he's been a fantasy disappointment, and he's played with such shitty quarterbacks in years past that maybe those guys, the T.J. Yates, the Ryan Mallets, the Brian Hoyers, they aren't as bad as Brock Osweiler. That's what I'm saying. That's a skip. That is the reason I said whoever the GM the Houston Texans is probably already cleaning out his office because if DeAndre Hopkins is putting up those kind of numbers with TJ Yates and uh, and Brian yeah. Hoyer and Ryan Mallett throwing him the ball, yeah, it's a problem. That's your $100 million man right there. That's it. And and let's uh, speaking of quarterbacks and $100 million men, uh, Tom Brady is probable for Sunday against the Los Angeles Rams. In Foxborough, the 9-2 and two New England Patriots take on these uh, Jeff Fisher-led Los Angeles Rams. They're 4-7. and seven. Los Angeles. Over under here, 44 points. Big, big, big number between the two. I've seen this number move from 14 to 13 and a half. 13 and a half for the New England Patriots at home. Uh, it's, it's just offensively a spineless Los Angeles Rams team. They just don't seem to have an identity at all. It's, it's, it's hope Tavon Austin can make some kind of play. Todd Gurley is non-existent. New England, I don't know that they are the team that we thought they were, but they're still, look, they're an average New England Patriots team. By their standards, that's still won nine games. So you can't say they're bad. Tom Brady's a player. Malcolm Mitchell is coming on as a wide receiver. Maybe just in time to help fill what void they can for the absence going forward that is Big 87. Rob Gronkowski will not, uh, will not see the field anymore this year, I'd be certain of it. I'm still going to take the New England Patriots to win this game 21-7. to do you think for do you think Jeff Fisher speaking of coaches on the hot seat? Do you think Jeff Fisher has like incriminating photos of all his bosses that he's that he's think, ever played for? Because he just seems to always always elude firing every single year. Well, I, Jeff Fisher is uh, he's right on pace for for uh, eight and eight. Eight and eight, Je- no more, yeah. no less, Mister Mister Mustache. But nine, eight and eight, he's right on pace. I think this is what where Tommy, like we're old. I think this is where Tommy Boy has to show why he's the greatest because obviously people are um, are debating now whether the Patriots are still the favorite with no with uh, no Gronk in the lineup. Um, I think this is where Brady shows he can get anybody involved. Chris Hogan, uh, like you said, Malcolm Mitchell, um, some of those guys who get them all involved. I still think it's no it's no problem for the Patriots. Uh, Thirty thirty one to ten to fucking Pats. Yeah, that's probably right. Um, we don't have the our Rams. Account. The Rams have no pulse, man. They show me You're, nothing. They don't. Uh, Pepper Jack? Well, the loss of Gronkowski is going to hurt New England in the long run. I think, uh, you know, it kind of closed the gap on the uh, the favorite, AFC favorite New England Patriots. Uh, our Oakland Raiders are, are right on their tail now, yeah. uh, the way they're mm-hmm. playing. Uh, I think that uh, Gronk's injury opens the door for Julian Edelman to make, become a bigger factor for the New England Patriots because they, they like to stretch the field and then drag him across the middle. I think you're going to see an awful lot of that against the Rams. Rams do have a potent defense. They just do not have an offense. Uh, New England, Bill Belichick knows what he's doing when he's playing against uh, teams uh, that are uh, one-dimensional, and uh, I'm sure Todd Gurley is going to be taken out of this game. I don't know if I'd start him if I'm a uh, Gurley owner in fantasy football. Nope. Uh, Rams are notorious for scoring roughly 10 points. 
Uh, New England, by the way, is 21 and four straight up in its last 25 games at home. I see them winning the game straight up by all means, but I I do believe they cover. I think it's going to be a 24-10 game, though. I think it's going to be a little bit closer than that uh, 13 and a half. 24-10 from Pepper Jack. I'm not starting Julian Edelman ever again this season. Every I, I avoided it for about nine weeks. Injuries on, injuries off. I kept him out of my lineup. The last couple times I've started him, it's been these measly eight-point days. Uh, I, I'm curious to see what if Martellus Bennett will fill in if he's if they're going to let him get healthy. I just want to see how they plan to go forward without Gronk. And do they plan to just keep the ball on the ground? Is this the week that we see uh, Deion Lewis really start to get used out of the backfield his third week back? Uh, might be interesting just to watch to see what to expect in the playoffs because this team is winning that division and going to the playoffs. And at this Do you think rate, Eric Dickerson will be at the game? I heard he might. <laughs> yeah, he might be there and watching with smile. He probably will go to this one because he's smiling at the thought of seeing the Rams get shattered. Bill, Bill Belichick is notorious for ruining fantasy football players' uh, yes. reliability, you know, because I know LeGarrette Blunt had uh, was having a monster season. All of a sudden, now with Deion Lewis coming back in the fold, uh, Mr. Belichick decides to go a little See, bit. See, this more is where the with, technical uh, difficulties are starting to mess with me. I mean, I it just I can't I, I can't get the music. It's just it's ruined. It's not my right. Day. It's just wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. But anyway, with uh, Dion Lewis back yeah. in the fold and uh, a little bit of James White, that kind of hinders Legarrette Blunt's uh, fantasy James prowess, Dillon. so to speak. Let's hope this is the week uh, that they go back to the pound them. But that Rams front uh, front defensive line is is no slouch. So I see a lot of James White, Dion Lewis, and a little Edelman over the middle. I do, too. He'll get them chasing. Um, Joshy McDee will get them chasing him and wear them out. Uh, Aaron Donald is pretty special, though. So that might, game might be worth watching. But anyhow, we're all on the same page. New England wins probably covers from a gambling perspective, though I'm not under any circumstance laying 13.5 points in an NFL game. Just not doing it. Uh, next game, this one sucks. Philadelphia at Cincinnati. I look at this game and have zero interest in watching it, uh, listening to it. I wouldn't walk across the street if I had a ticket. Philadelphia at Cincinnati. Over under here is 42. Cincinnati is a one and a half point home favorite. I am taking the Eagles to win this game, 21 to 15 on the late touchdown, uh, and that's all I got. That's a, there's really no logic to this one. I got the Bengals winning it outright, 22, 22 to 20. Uh, my only bold prediction for this one, as far as insight, I think Vontez Burfick will punch Carson Wentz in the junk. Something might happen there. Uh, Pepper Jack without AJ Green Captain, does uh, Captain does, Zeno shows no moisey. Does Cincinnati do anything without A.J. Green? Cincinnati is 3-7-1. and one. I guess I uh, pinned Jacksonville with the most disappointing team in the AFC earlier in the show, but uh, you can't really uh, count Cincinnati out of the mix because 3-7-1 uh, and one for a Bengals franchise is, uh, is pretty, pretty, pretty subpar. It's the worst and, and to been me, it over 10 years. Very unexpected, uh, you know, um, any coach, any team, Marvin Lewis. I think what eight years in a row he's made the playoffs, something like yeah, that. Something doesn't look like it's going to. That division. Yeah, yeah. I'll make it. I'll make it brief. Also, Cincinnati has absolutely no, no offensive potential without AJ Green spreading that offense. You might see a little Tyler Eifert, even though Philadelphia does maintain the tight ends pretty well. Um, Philadelphia really, really disappointed me on the Monday night Monday nighter against Green Bay because I thought that. Uh, you were going to see a shootout in that game. I think when uh, Jordan or Matthews went down in the first quarter, kind of changed the outlook of that game. I don't know if he's available. I don't think it's going to matter. I see the Bengals winning this game. I think they cover that uh, one and a half point spread. It's going to be close. Twenty seventeen Cincinnati. I, I do like. I heard this uh, Philly. The Philly fans are classic, all, all known as by booing Santa Claus. But this one was hysterical. They have that jail built inside the stadium, and they pretty much. They give him. They, they ask the guy, one drunken fan, what did he have to What did he have to say for himself? And he just looked at the judge and said, "Troy Aikman's a fag." <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> that's fucking great. That's just that Still sums the up the Eagles fans. Uh, next up, man, this game's got to me implications. I see a Buffalo Bills team traveling cross country to the Coliseum to take on the Oakland Raiders at the O. Co. The Raiders are a three point home favorite. Over under here, forty eight and a half. Uh, Buffalo, to me, as a Raider fan, Buffalo's scary. They are 1-3-1 uh, <clears throat> and one against the spread in their last five games. They're not a cover machine by any sense. 
Uh, but six and three straight up in their last nine. Rex has got these guys playing. They're very good against the run. They run the ball exceptionally well. I've been stroking LaShawn McCoy all season. That guy's a hell of a player. But I do think that this Raider defense is really starting to come along. I wasn't the biggest Ken Norton believer for the first uh, all of last year and the first part of this year, but I, I'm starting to see things come together. They're understanding things. They're covering a little bit better. Uh, Raiders are 4-1 and one against the spread in the last five, 5-0 five and oh straight up in their last five games. I'm taking the Raiders to win this game at home and cover 28-20. Interesting. I like the Ra- I like the Raiders in this game too, but I think uh, there's another one. You're going to see the points. I think you're going to see the points in this one. Um, I like the Raiders along the, along the lines of a score of 35 to 28. I think it's a really high score high scoring affair out there in the Bay. I I just I, I mean I got to ask you too. How does it feel to have a franchise quarterback? I would not know as a Jets fan. How does that feel? Feels wonderful. Feels yeah, really, really wonderful. And the leadership ability of that franchise quarterback is just. Uh, off the charts. I don't know if uh, you spend any time watching the Raiders this year, but uh, Derek Carr is the first person off the sidelines shaking hands and patting everybody down uh, after they kick a field goal, make a special play on defense, whatever you call it. He He's just a solid leader. Uh, he is definitely, most definitely, a franchise quarterback, and I think any Oakland Raider fan needs to be uh, licking their chops for the next three to five years because he's and- the man. It's kind of funny yeah. that that guy was that guy in that draft was a sec was a second round pick and then um, the only the only sighting we've seen of Johnny Manziel is he looks like a skeleton by the by the MGM Grand Pool pool in Vegas. I mean, <laughs> go figure, Ray, Ray Farmer. That's why you no longer have a job, buddy. No, that's right. And Johnny Manziel does have backstage passes to every Justin Bieber concert uh, going forward. So that's you know he's got that going for him. I guess he does have that going for him. A lot of well, I mean, Bieber or Pepper Jack. Pepper Jack likes his Raiders. Uh, you're right. Buffalo's going to travel cross country. They're scary. I don't think Sammy Watkins is 100. Uh, percent I don't even think he's 80. percent He's uh, he's still got that uh, bone issue. In no, his you're blood. right. He was at 77. percent as of yeah, 77. Uh, percent You know, I called it last week. I told you Teddy Ginn was going to get past the defense against the Raiders, and he did because that's if there is a weakness in the Raiders, I think it's that uh, special speed uh, on a uh, receiver that can burn them deep. Uh, I look for Watkins, if healthy, to get behind the defense on a big play, but I am all over my Raiders covering and going over 28-23. Oh, wow, pretty close. Here's another game out. This one's out in California as well, and this one interests me quite a bit because I have no idea who the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are. Last two weeks, you've got to say they're pretty fucking good. Yeah, I mean, they're in a three-game winning streak here. Uh, I don't know that they're beating anybody. Great, they beat Chicago at home. Chicago sucks. They absolutely whipped Seattle at home. Uh, And I'm not going to say Seattle sucks. That's a good football team, and and they beat them up. It looks like the front four in Tampa is starting to get pressure. They're starting to gel. Kids like Noah Spence have uh, have proven to be pretty good draft picks thus far. Gerald McCoy dinged up but going to play Sunday, as I understand it. I don't know who San Diego is either. I think San Diego in any other division in the NFL is probably a wild card team. I, I think Phillip Rivers is better than some of the games he's had. He's, you know, the four interception game against Miami. He's dealing with, with young wide receivers. Uh, the, the, the experience just isn't there, and it's such a big deal. I think Phillip's got one left in him. This game here is uh, San Diego Chargers are a four point favorite over under 47 and a half. I don't know that Tampa's ready to boat race going cross country. San Diego's going to win this game 26-21, but look for Tampa to put up one hell of a fight and get to Phillip Rivers. But if if Melvin Gordon can get involved, keep the ball out of of Winston's hands, San Diego 26-21. I'm 100% in in agreement with you. I have a different score, though. I have have the Chargers winning 31-28. I think actually we'll see an exciting – I mean, I won't watch this game because of the matchup itself, but – I think we're going to see an exciting matchup. I think you're going to see some points. Phillip versus Jameis, and by the way, I know I know this might pain you, T, but Jameis is good. Oh, he can he's, play. Okay. There's no doubt he's, about it. He Jameis play. is good. There's uh, Phillip, yeah, flinging Phillip. That is his downfall, man. He is a gunslinger, though. I mean, he's one. I mean, he could have the one going having a great game, and he's one in a, one bad decision away from ruining it all. That's just who he is, who he's always been. But um, I think we'll see an exciting matchup, though. And out there in uh, sunny San Diego, but I go with the Chargers, thirty-one to twenty-eight. Thirty-one twenty-eight, San Diego. What do you got there, Pepper Jack? 
Don't look now, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are 6-5 and five in a game behind the Atlanta Falcons in the NFC South. Um, I know that earlier in the season we all thought the same.